Of course, we want to welcome the members of Yibine and uh, who follow us on YouTube and other people that are not joining live. But uh, I have great admiration for you who showed up live for this, uh, knowing what's on everyone's plates, <laughs> particularly the people I see on the screen right now. Okay, so I'm going to cut to the spiritual chase. And uh, I want to just contribute something I think is very important for Sukkot. All right. Rosh Hashanah is over, right? Not exactly. Says the Peleuates that Sukkot is a type of Rosh Hashanah for Simcha, for joy. And I ask you, who couldn't use a little more joy in their lives? <laughs> I don't care if you have some now. Who, who wouldn't want more, right? Who doesn't want more joy? And we're going to talk about what gets in the way. But let's understand why it's so important, so important to feel joy in circus. okay? So let's go to something we recite in Hallel, all right? Uh, this is um, recited in every Hallel. Okay, just let me share this with you. Okay. Uh, right before we shout out, Anna Hashem, we should shout out to Hashem. We say the following beautiful words. Zahayoma saw Hashem. This is the day that Hashem made. Nagila v'nisma chabo. Let us Nagila, <laughs> Hava Nagila, right? Let us rejoice and feel Simcha on it, all right? The Eskimos have a lot of words for snow. We have a lot of words for joy. That itself is, I think, a major attraction to Judaism, okay? So Nagila v'nismecha bo. In fact, just a, a, an O to Hava Nagila. Uh, I remember when I was uh, in Los Angeles, uh, on, a, on a Shabbos, and I was invited to, I'll give them credits, the Pomerances. And they actually did their, you know, in Los Angeles, the weather is beautiful most of the year. So they did their Shabbos meal in their driveway. <laughs> so they set up their table in the, uh, in the driveway, and we're sitting there enjoying Shabbos. And the thing is, I asked, uh, I asked them, you know, uh, this is great for us, but any ever get any complaints from the neighbors? So he told me, he looked at me, his name's Norm. Norm looks at me and he goes, well, I'll tell you, one time, you know, we're singing Shabbos songs and this and like that. And we just, hey, hey. So they stop singing the Shabbos songs and the neighbor yells at, do you guys know Hava Nagila? <laughs> they made a request for Hava Nagila. Okay, so Nagila is a very holy word. It's in this Tehillim. Okay, so it says, this is the day Hashem made. Let us Nagila, let us be excitedly joyous and feel deep Simcha on it, right? Bo. So the Midrash, Pesikta Rabasai, asked the following question. It said, this is the day Hashem made. Let us rejoice and rejoice, Bo. Are we rejoicing in the day that Hashem made, like Sukkot? Or are we rejoicing in Hashem, the one who made the day? Guess what? And this is, this is a deep insight into how to achieve Simcha Shal Mitzvah. Guess what? It's in Hashem. Kamash Malan. Enjoy your sukkahs. Enjoy the festival. In the festival. is Hashem. We need to rejoice with him, with Hashem. How do we do that? That's what we're going to talk about tonight. But I wanted to see this source. This is big, right? And for those of you who, um, for those of you who've never experienced Simcha Shel Mitzvah. I want to share, um, also give him Elias Neshama, Nachum Ben Yehezko, my dad. 
my dad came to our wedding, uh, which is, you know, about 30 years ago. And it was the first Jewish wedding he had ever experienced, if you will. And we're sitting next to each other and people are coming up and singing and dancing, et cetera, et cetera. So, and my dad, all of a sudden, a very, very perceptive man. He says, these people are high. They're intoxicated, but they're not drinking. What's going on here? He saw this, this sublime high. They were high. They were intoxicated. So if anyone thinks that um, regular intoxication is something, nah, doesn't compare to Simcha Shol Mitzvah. So I'm sure we all want to attain this. So the first thing we have to do is understand what interferes with Simcha Shel Mitzvah. Okay. What interferes with Kavana La Mitzvah? What interferes with Tefillah? What interferes with having uh, good character traits with your children, with your friends, with your spouse? What interferes with all that? Busy, rushing, we're always rushing, right? That is a major source of interference, okay? Let me bring you some exhibits about uh, the, the, the busyness issue, okay? So um, the first one I wanna share with you, um, listen to this statistic, okay? There, someone even wrote a book uh, uh, first, listen to the title. It says, Heptic, let me do that again. Heptic busyness has become the symbol of achievement. It isn't. <laughs> it isn't the symbol of achievement. But listen to this. This is a, stu a great study. Dr. Setzer, so I think you'll ratify this. It says, there was a study from the Monthly Labor Review, and they asked people to estimate how many hours they work a week, okay? So that people that estimated they, ready for this? Get ready for this. People that estimated that they work 75 hours a week were off on average by 25 hours. <laughs> Do you hear that? They, they thought that they worked 50 and they thought they worked 25. And one person surveyed said, I probably work, you know, really workaholic. He says, I think I work 180 hours a week. Problem, there aren't 180 hours in a week, okay? So what do we see? People have this intense perception that they're busy. I'm so busy, 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 right? And 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 the truth of the matter is, it there it's not, and by the way, it was pointing out the people that were, um, having this estimation are not people doing double shifts in ICU. Uh, I, I met this one uh, a woman driving an Uber. And, you know, she told me, you know, she's a single woman with children and she, you know, drops them off and then works in the late afternoon and in the evening and then gets up in the morning. There are people that are very busy, right? But many of us just feel so busy that we just simply don't have time. Now, you know who I'm going to blame for this, right? Of course, <laughs> it's the Yetzer Hara, right? That it's very famous point, but let's reiterate it so we'll not attack it. It says, the Yetzer Hara is very skilled, says the Messias Yasharim, at deceiving us, okay? This is a great example. We are not as busy as we think we are, all right? But he's very good at deceiving us. And one of the things he does is, what Paro did, he keeps us feeling so busy, right? Constantly, uh, I, I've got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this. And what happens? Because he knows. If you'll stop for a moment, guess what will happen? You'll connect to Hashem. <laughs> it's that simple, all right? So now let's explain that a little more deeply. So uh, the point I want to make out is, we are, um, one of the things we have to recognize, if we want to have a shot at reaping a tremendous year of joy in the Rosh Hashanah of Simcha, of Sukkot, we have to realize 
what the enemy is going to try to do. No, we got to get ready. We got to set up the sukkah. We got to set up the for meals. Oh, someone's coming. Okay. Oh, and we got to take care of his arva minimum, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So be on guard. Be on guard. The and major interference to joy is the perception of busyness. Okay. Now, let, wait, uh, let's just do a little more psychology on this. All right. Rabbi Tversky, um, I, I, um, in the yeshiva, I taught a Vod Musser, and um, one of the assignments I gave people that were working on developing themselves was um, taking Tversky time. That's what we called it, okay? So this, Rev Tversky Zitzal uh, told the story about himself that was, I, I think many people will resonate with this. You know, he said he was already uh, a successful rabbi, an author, a very successful psychiatrist. He, you know, supervised the hospital, a very achieved man, right? A, a busy and achieved. So he actually, um, you know, it was time to have a little bit of a vacation. So he went to a retreat in, a, let's say it was in Colorado, like a spa. And, you know, he had his uh, headphones on, right? Probably listened to a sheer and and he was going to edit one of his books. He wrote like he wrote ninety books, right? So the person who's managing the spa says, um, "I'm sorry, Doctor Tversky. Um, we have a rule: when you go into the sauna right now, you cannot bring in earphones, and you cannot bring in uh, your, your book to edit. You you have to just go in and sit there." He said it was dreadful. <laughs> Rabbi Tursky felt dreadful. It was really uncomfortable for this wonderful man, Zetzal, to be with himself. And he realized he was not comfortable with himself, with his thoughts, etc. He was filled with, let's say, negative critical thoughts. Now, if anyone is under the illusion that enough achievement and worthy achievement, this man was enriching the lives of people spiritually, saving people from addiction, um, caring for humanity. I mean, the person should have had the self-esteem of a giant, a giant. So the question is, what happened? Why was this man who was so imbued with self uh, with, with achievement, he wasn't ha he couldn't bear to be with himself. Okay, so what did he say? You, you don't need my uh, I, well, I gave you the Missy issue, sorry, but he's he he blamed it also, he blamed it on our Yetzirah, our evil inclination, which Hashem put us there to give us free choice, right? He blamed it on that. He says that. You, there, there's that voice is not your voice. That voice that is always bashing into you. You know, my friend Marshall, he has a great thing. He says that you know how the, in the uh, game shows. So if you get a right answer, it goes ping. Right. If you get a wrong answer, it goes ah. So ping. Right answer. Wrong answer. Ah. So he's saying if we took a seriously look at what's going on in our mind. And I'm talking about you successful people as well, or, or maybe especially. All the time, ah, ah, no ping. <laughs> because even if we do something and we feel a sense of success, we're saying, oh, come on, that wasn't what we could have done, right? You know, that 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 inner critic is always going, ah, no pings. <laughs> so this, so you hear we're bu we're busy. Why are we busy? Because we're not comfortable being with ourselves. Why are we not comfortable being with ourselves? Because we have an identity um, complex, okay? If, an identity complex. We think that the voice of discouragement and criticism and all that stuff is our voice. We buy the sales pitch of the Yetzirah, of the evil inclination, right? So we are up against a little bit of a challenge here uh, to feel 
simcha shel mitzvah, the joy that comes from mitzvahs, even when we're, uh, we're in a glorious situation like circus. All right. So let's just dis discuss now. Number one is you have to know the enemy, right? And you have to be in guard. So what do we do about it? Right? The question is, what do we do about it? So the, uh, That's the first thing. <laughs> let me let me um, read this to you. Uh, there is this woman who's uh, you know gives um, constant guidance to parents, and she's a from woman, and, and she has these posts, and and she described the situation and listen to her situation. I'm just showing you how um, people tap into what the Torah is saying. Okay, in order to not feel constantly rushed worried, frustrated, or overwhelmed, we need to give our nervous systems a break on a regular, ideally daily basis. Here's a very inexpensive strategy. Two minutes, I think that's a lot, two minutes, just stare, <laughs> just stare at the wall, just Hang in there, Torsky time, I call it, right? Try 30 seconds, right? Where you just relax and sit there. By the way, be careful. I'm at, I practice hypnosis, okay? And I'm using my hypnosis voice. If we can do that for a minute or two during Sukkot, we're on our way, okay? And I remind you that every teeny wincy moment of consciousness and, and, and presence is more than a lifetime's career achievement, okay? We said this, more than the, the, you can think of any achievement, it doesn't match it. And what's my, what's my proof for that? If you have a second where you're connecting to Hashem and you're doing a mitzvah, right? Why, how do I know that's greater than a, in a career filled with uh, constant achievement? Well, it's the pay you get. The, the career, I mean, you can turn your career and your work into mitzvahs. That's another class. But for right now, you get paid here for your career achievements. You get the golden watch, etc. But in order to pay you for a minute of genuine connection to Hashem, the, a minute of doing a mitzvah, a minute of simcha shel mitzvah, Hashem says, I can't, there's nothing in the world to give you. Everything falls short. Nothing will be sufficient pay for what you achieved. You hear this? So let's review simcha shel mitzvah. Step number one, realize we're, we're plagued and addicted to busyness. Why? Because we're uncomfortable being with ourselves. Why? Because the thoughts that run through our head are, ah, ah. that's what's running through our head. Why? Because that comes from the Yetzirah. Okay? So the solution, the remedy is, Do that. But now let's let's make that very holy. Okay? You do that even once or twice uh, on Sukkot, and you add, what are we rejoicing about? We're rejoicing with Hashem. Now, let's learn how to do that. Okay? Once we do that, and we take a minute or two, even a minute, you just have to realize that you, it is so precious, okay? But let's now understand, how do you rejoice with Hashem? Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, let's use Rabbi Miller for this. I, if anybody um, did not get a chance to read what he said, uh, Rabbi Miller's that Saul said about Rosh Hashanah, 
it's very relevant to Sukkis. Okay, so let me bring this up. And now this is for you who um, daily practice, uh, you daven, you learn, etc. He says, what's unfortunately most people's, um, what is a Shem to most people? And he pointed out, unfortunately, Hashem is a word in the Chumash. Hashem is a word in the Siddur. <laughs> Hashem is a word in those books, right? So that's, let's say, that level. Now, those people have an intellectual understanding that it, this world didn't get here by itself. <laughs> and somebody's been guiding my life pretty well and helping me grow, etc. But experientially, Hashem is often a word in the Siddur, a word in the Chumash. So what's the next level up? Okay. So I, I'll tell you this story again. Um, the, there was, um, you know, many, many Israelis, um, their their travel choice after the army when they got their their leave and, and now they travel around the world many of them picked india right and many of them went for you know buddhism and uh hinduism all these things that was their number one choice okay now when they came back there was this one man he was actually from peru a jew from peru and he was um, he had evidently seen the light in India and he wanted, he knew he was Jewish. So he wanted to have an experience of God with Jews. So he, he happened to end up in our, in our Rebbe's yeshiva, in, uh, in diaspora yeshiva. And our Rebbe, Rabbi Green, sat before him. And so the this man from Peru said to, him, to Rabbi Green, he says, I want to experience God with you. So Rabbi Green says, okay. The Peru man said again, I want to experience God with you. Rabbi Green said, okay. <laughs> He's thinking, this rabbi doesn't get what's going on. I want to experience God with you. Rabbi Green goes, okay. <laughs> So it's step number one, to move a Shem from a word in the Siddur or a word in the Chumash is to simply draw into your awareness that we are in the presence of Hashem right now, okay? Hashem is fueling existence moment by moment. Hashem isn't existence himself. He's fueling it, but you are in the presence of Hashem right now okay <laughs> so if you want to take hashem out of the sitter and into your home just do that right just say i'm in hashem's presence now okay now before this we have to don't be afraid okay don't listen to that lousy sales pitch you're okay and Hashem's here. You're not alone. You're never alone. Okay? So that's step number one. Okay? And every second you draw Hashem into uh, your awareness, you should have in mind the mitzvahs of Shavisi Hashem, placing Hashem into your awareness. It's a mitzvah. Yerus Hashem. Anochi, Amuna in Hashem. These are huge mitzvahs. So that's number one. When you get in the sukkah, Find a moment and take a deep breath. Turn off the critic, right? And move Hashem from the sitter to your awareness. It's really, that's a great start. If you think a little bit about how Shem is, it, that helps. But now, guess what? We need to go farther. And if we go farther, Simcha Shal Mitzvah takes on a whole other level. Avinu. Hashem is our dad. Hashem's our father. He's a divine father. 
He's a perfect father, a perfect dad. He loves us to no end, right? Now, Rabbi Miller explained, and I worked on this on Yom Kippur a lot. You know, it was on Yom Kippur, I think. Not, not Rosh Hashanah, I apologize. Look at his, his Taurus of Vigdor uh, booklet on Yom Kippur. Avinu, right? So when we did a lot of bad things, you know, during the year, we were critical of people, we lied, we spoke Lush and Har, we got angry, we neglected Torah, et cetera, et cetera, all those bad things. So he's saying, you know, that created a distance with our dad, right? Our, we, uh, you know, we kind of pulled back and, and there was some distance there. So guess what? When you went through Yom Kippur, right? When you went through Yom Kippur, you were healing the relationship with dad, right? You were healing the relationship with dad. You did a lot, right? Now, not to mention the king, but let's say, I want to say to you, if you will experience a little bit of a vino, right? You know, uh, if you move Hashem from your awareness, Hashem is present, and you move it to our dad, you know what our dad did? He figured out how to get us to improve our character, draw close to him, have more integrity. He did all these things, all Elul. And then Rosh Hashanah, he gave us a taste of his royal presence and kingdom. And then Yom Kippur, he really, he really he helped us heal the relationship. And now he says, come with me, if you will. We know Hashem has no physical form. He says, enter the sukkah, right? Rejoice. Now, I, the way I'm explaining is one of the classic explainings of why we rejoice on sukkahs and how it rejoices him. We are rejoicing over the gift of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the healing and the, the renewal of relationship. And now we bask in joy and, uh, and realizing that our Avina, our dad, our dad loves us so much. And there we are uh, sitting in the wings of the divine presence, uh, under the wings of the divine presence. Now that, if you can have even a moment of two, moment or two of that, you have tasted Simcha Shal Mitzvah. And I assure you, that it is such an achievement. It's an achievement of the lifetime, okay? And we know that uh, simcha in general, joy is, is it, look, you know, oz vehedva bin como, um, sublime delight and joy is part of being in the presence of Hashem, right? So if you want to experience God, <laughs> Uh, tap into this joy. Lo accept yourself because Hashem does. Okay, Hashem loves you. You know, I I always tell my wife. You know, when she gets afraid of the the judgment, which is a healthy thing. And so, but I say, look, you, you know, uh, Hashem loves you more than any of our children. You know, I admit, you know, he, he much much more, and you just have to realize. No matter how we act, he loves us, right? Hashem loves you as the man who would shout out to parrots. Okay, so I know you got to get back to work, building your sukkahs, buying your arbiminims, making meals, uh, preparing for this glorious time to Nagila Vanisma Chabo, to rejoice and rejoice. <laughs> no, to externally rejoice and 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 reflect. And by the way, one last point, and this is a theme at KLM, reflection creates connection, right? In other words, if you can even just shut off the busyness machine for a minute to, if you reflect, you'll connect. Hag Sameach, Zman I, Sim I wish it for all of us, just pure joy in the, uh, in the, in the sale of the Kanfei Shechina. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. If I can't just make one comment, I think it was President 
Calvin Coolidge, who said very proudly, the business of America is business. And, you know, we really have adopted that. As you said, people define themselves by how busy they are, their, bus- their business, or they're a great businessman, right? And, you know, I take notes. I was take notes, during this, take notes during this year, and you used the word busyness. And as I was typing it, I realized that the word busyness is essentially the same word as business. <laughs> business is busyness, except in business, you take out the Y and you put an I. And it's the I, right? Right? Beautiful. You, 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 Beautiful. You, you, you submerge yourself in your business, but it's really just busyness. And, um, you Beautiful. know, I remember when I was a young lawyer in large law firms, they would pride themselves on billing, you know, uh, uh, as many hours a day as possible. And the legend that went around is one associate was able to bill 27 hours in a day. Why? Because he was sent from New York to California. And so on the plane, he worked and he billed those three hours. <laughs> That's oh, the that guy who worked 180 hours a week. Right. So it was, it, what, a, what a madrega he reached, 27 hours a day, right? <laughs> so that's the idea, you know? So, so I mean, but the whole idea that we've glorified business and it's really business and busyness, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's the, the language itself <laughs> reveals, right. reveals the connection. That that is so perfect. You know, I, when when you ha- when someone has an insight like that, you know, I already started to hear it as you were unfolding it. That makes so much sense. Also, I saw a book that really made this point. I just loved it. Listen to this title and tell me who doesn't relate to this. It says, "When I relax, I feel guilty." <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> that these are the things that uh, and and that's what uh, Paro Paro t- didn't want us to relax. So this goes back. This is essential to Jewish history and connection to Hashem is to be a, let go. Now, just uh, you know to to um, what a reframe one thing about business, right? If it's a voda, business can turn into service, right? If we do it, right, as we discussed in the previous class, is that Hashem wants us to, in a dignified way, make something in this world, contribute, care for our family, care for the people we're helping, et cetera, right? So we do have that, but that's not what we're talking about here. Like you said, uh, the uh, I, I think, um, I hope I can remember this. Someone just said, when, uh, when do you know a Jewish child is weaned? Right. You know, when, when they've been. Well, no. When do you know a Jewish baby is viable? It says when it's completed its internship in medicine. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that we know this is uh, this is our history. You know, it, it, these are noble things, but they obviously the H.R. co-ops them. OK, so. All right. So I really I, I, I challenge you I'll give you an eight day challenge. Right to grab as many moments, okay? As many moments of Simcha Shel Mitzvah by turning that machine off. Because as the um, the Bilvavi said, you could go, and I saw this, you can, your body, your entire body can enter the sukkah, but your mind is somewhere else. Your head is somewhere else. So let's completely enter this, uh, the sukkah, right? By turning off the volume of the Yetzirah. Okay, great. Thank uh, you. Are we proud? Yeah. So just one thing. Um, yes, your class is beautiful. Uh, in the morning, we make a bracha on being busy. Sorry. Uh, yeah. La so? Yeah. Say, uh, so? Yeah. All right. So you said, wait, state out the, the difficulty and solve it for us. No. So uh, I was just going to bring it as a, as a healthy way, I guess I was more making a statement than maybe I was short, short cutting it, but yes. Okay. So, so, go ahead. No, but you, so Rabbi, I'll, I'll bring it out. Rabbi Michael uh, is saying, right? Or oh, you want to say it? Uh, okay. I, how could we be saying that business is, uh, is a bad thing when we're uh, at the bracha and being busy in the morning? Right. Right. And the tarots, the, the the, the, is that depends on what the busyness is. It's a business or busyness. <laughs> right. Right. So, the, right. Yeah. so la, we say la soak the divrei Torah, right? That an essek is a business, right? Right. And it's really, the, I think, though, the translation might, and to solve the problem, 
it's your it's an occupation it occupies oh okay you can say that that too but let me just because you brought it up rabbi michael when it says do we uh, rejoice in the day or in hashem so it says one of the explanations we rejoice in hashem through his torah in other words the way to access connection to hashem is through the torah so if we're um if we're involved in that that's also a key way to rejoice in Hashem directly. Right. Very good. Yes, you call it, Rabbi Michael. That's a wonderful point to bring out about La Soak. Right. Uh, just to yeah, cut, yeah, off the back of what you were saying. <laughs> right. No, and I just want to say, I think, you know, a possible terrace is what we say uh, when we conclude a day of learning, right? Uh, we thank Hashem, you know, we're, you know, I'm running to, I'm running and they're running. Right, right. Uh, uh, you know, I'm right. I'm busy and they're busy, but I'm know, toiling and they're toiling. Exactly, I'm right. busy. And beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yes, right. Right. beautiful. Right. Now that that could be the terrace. Yeah, I, I uh, speaking, it is beautiful. Joseph, I, have, you have, I, 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 I that was in my arts group. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So I was just gonna piggyback on what the Reverend Michael was saying. That very often our lenses are inverted in that you know we say. Oh, you know, I should be busy with Torah like I'm busy during the day at the office when the opposite is true. That, you know, that I should be busy with Torah. And then, you know, when I'm at the office, you know, it's borrowing the term the other way, I think, anyway, as far uh -huh. as like, uh, yeah. That my, yeah, that my real avoda is working for Hashem. Also, I'm at the office, you know, right. it's uh, right. not as, uh, yeah, but, uh, but to be busy, you know, with, mit with Torah mitzvahs is really my, my prime occupation. And my money comes through other channels, you know, kind of thing. Beautiful, beautiful, excellent. Okay, wonderful, everybody. All right, back to Avoda. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah.